So please, please allow me to uh, introduce a man whose heart is bigger than this conglomerate. His passion for excellence inspires us to always do our best. Please welcome the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of First Philippine Holdings, Mr. Federico Piki Lopez. I was still expecting a few more numbers, so this also comes a bit like a surprise. But, uh, anyway, welcome to the Lobbyist Achievement Awards uh, for 2012. And, um, you know, early in January this year, I spent a three-hour session with about 500 of our officers at FPH. And I talked to them a lot about our family, our business history, uh, where our Lopez values came from, the many crises we faced uh, along the way, as well as a lot of the lessons that we need to, to take you know, from it all. And at one point, I put up this slide showing the phenomenal growth of our stock price at FPH the last two years. However, the next one, the next slide I put up, compared our market capitalization to that of other Philippine conglomerates. And as you can see, we're basically uh, there on the left-hand left, left -hand side. Now, Bu Chanko came up to me uh, after the presentation said, Piki, yeah, but FPH is not the whole Lopez group. And uh, if you add it all, we're actually bigger. So just for completeness, I decided to add it there. And uh, basically, even if you put all three together, we'd still pay no? But the message really here is that uh, it is clear that we have a lot of catching up to do. Now, the slide obviously left a very deep impression in the mind of our Chairman Emeritus, uh, that a few days later in the first holdings board, and I think it was uh, after the board had finished, he, he commented and, and said, why are we so small? Now, fast forward a few months later, and this is just about last month, I found myself at a, an Asia Business Council meeting in, in Kyoto, talking with uh, Francis Yeo, owner, uh, he's the owner and managing director of the Malaysian conglomerate YTL Corporation. Now for those of you that don't know, uh, YTL began as a small construction company in 1955. However, its real fortune came when it made bold moves into power generation in 1994 through a 1,200 megawatt investment in natural gas-fired power generation. Now, much the same as where we were in the year 2000 with our Santa Rita and San Lorenzo power plants of 1,500 megawatts. YTL's market cap in 1994 was about $1.7 billion. Then, it more than doubled to about $3.6 billion by 2000. And today, their market cap is $4.8 billion, or roughly 206.4 billion pesos. And their investments now span industries like electric transmission grids in South Australia, power generation in Indonesia, a water distribution utility in the UK, WiMAX networks in Malaysia, and luxury resorts all over the world. In comparison, FPH's market cap today just stands at roughly 1 billion US dollars. Now also last August, Gabi gave the closing remarks at our mid-year planning conference here in Rockwell. And somehow, I, I always look forward to his remarks because he has the gift of being able to deliver a very insightful message that always hits the mark, but in a very light and humorous manner. And there he told us, now half-jokingly he said, we could really be making a lot more money if we didn't have our corporate values. <laughs> but then he goes on to say that, uh, on the other hand, much blood, time, and sacrifice have been made in the name of those values, so consider them etched in stone. It's what makes us unique, and it's what makes us different. So it was Gabby's way of saying, we don't mind not making as much money, and our principles will always come first. So we all ended the conference on a light note, 
But even a few days later, Gabby's comments were still ringing in my head and it, it, you know, it got me thinking. And the questions in my mind were, are our values consistent with our financial and economic aspirations? Or do they just get in the way of making money? Are they holding us back? Now, our Lopez values have, have brought us to great heights throughout history. Lolo's pioneering entrepreneurial spirit brought us into a wide range of industries that were all drivers of national development. From sugar milling to transportation, both uh, land and sea, that was buses and, and uh, shipping, and aviation, electric power distribution, power generation, oil pipelines, transformer manufacturing, banking, and quite significantly, newspapers and broadcast media. This business has distinguished us from other conglomerates, and unlike other business groups with media arms, we have run this as an institution that enables accountability and empowers society with a voice to speak truth unto power. Our family has always seen this role of media as vital to the health and development of any democratic nation. And throughout our history, we have never wavered in this belief. Now, it's primarily because of this that our values also bring us great struggles. Now, our family has a tradition of fighting with errant and wayward presidents. And I'm sure all of you will agree that Gabi continues to pursue this tradition quite faithfully. In 1953, Lolo was at odds with President Elpidio Quirino when his Manila Chronicle exposed a deal involving the sale of government land where the president's brother is said to have made huge kickbacks. In the early 60s, Diosdado Macapagal clamped down on government loans of sugar planters that milled with Lolo Centrals. And his government also attempted to reverse Meralco's rate increases. Fortunately, his vicious assaults failed and Lolo survived those attacks. In the early 70s, the Manila, Manila Chronicle did exposés on Marcos and Imelda's hidden wealth, more than 15 years before it became commonly known. The consequence was that when martial law was declared, of course, Meralco, ABS-CBN, and the Manila Chronicle were seized from us practically at that point. When we returned after ETSA 1 in 1986, we were forced to rebuild the conglomerate that was practically on the edge of bankruptcy because of the mismanagement of the Marcos Cronies who had taken it over while we were gone. 